Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the UK Met Office Run, the GFS Ensembles and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now we are in the reliable time frame for Christmas. I can say that the models have finally converged on a reasonable solution and it does look like it is going to be heading really quite cold over the second half of Christmas Day for many areas from Midlands northwards and it will be turning cold for all throughout Boxing Day. Now the milder solutions, I'll just do a few within the models as there is so much uncertainty in the models have been forecasting this really quite poorly. There are still a few milder solutions but the majority are going cold and having these sort of slider low systems and I'll have a look at some precipitation charts in this video and you'll see there is the potential of seeing some significant snow at times but those details are not quite ironed out yet. So if you run through the latest GFS you can see the high pressure pushing up towards Greenland. Now you can see Low pressure is moving out from Svalbard and low pressure is out in the middle of the Atlantic. These are the two colliding air masses, milder air from the southwest, cold air from the northeast. You see by the 23rd, so Wednesday and Thursday this week, mild air will generally win out. However, the colder air is coming. And by Christmas Eve, if we have a look at the age of the HPA temperature, you can see the colder air is across northern Scotland and is bitterly cold across Scandinavia as well. And that air is coming our way. And if we do evolve this along, you can see low pressure just to our south is bumping into that cold air. And by midday on Saturday, Christmas Day that is, we are seeing mild air pressure from the south bumping into bitterly cold air to our north. And that could give some snow. And that cold air will be moving southwards throughout the end of Christmas Day into Boxing Day with low pressure sliding in. There could be snow at that boundary, and at the moment, that boundary is across the Midlands into northern England. I have to see how it does play, because other models have it further southwards, a few have it a bit further northwards as well. However, beyond that, all the models are now showing much colder air to sink southwards across the UK. Now, the GFS run is actually one of the milder outliers in the ensembles, as we'll see at the end of the video. But generally, this pattern is pretty locked in, with high pressure towards Greenland, spiralling colder air. However, towards the middle of the week, we start to see westerly winds trying to break through the cold block. At this stage, it's very difficult to say how quickly we'll do it. Potentially Wednesday, Thursday next week, we could start to see the block break down. But given the amount of inconsistency we've been in the, seen in the models over the last um, sort of few days, I really wouldn't look at this in too much detail at this stage. Concentrate over the next sort of five, six days or so. However, we'll have a look through, and you can see it does break down that colder block to our north and our east. Would be a transitional snow event, so snow turning to rain, um, and things would turn much milder beyond that. And it does show something very mild and westerly. However, right towards the end of the run, we actually do start to build in a high-pressure system again, once, to all, once again towards Iceland and Greenland, and that would start to bring cold rain back in from the northeast. So, GFS is not completely done with blocking yet, but... In around a week's plus time, so it's sort of at seven, eight, nine days time, it does start to show milder winds coming in from the southwest. But as I said, with the inconsistency we've had recently, I wouldn't look too much into that. Now, if we do have a look at the precipitation, we'll go through this quite briefly, as it still is flip-flopping between runs, um, and we'll probably tomorrow or the day after, um, yeah, probably tomorrow we'll have a look, uh, a much detailed look at the precipitation from the models. Now you can see reasonably dry at the moment, but southwesterly winds will be moving in tomorrow with snow of the highest ground of Scotland, but rain for the majority of areas and generally bringing in much milder conditions. However, by Christmas Eve, that cold air is sinking in from the north and you can see where it collides on Christmas Day, snow across many parts of the Midlands into northern England. And as it sinks southwards, could be some snow across central southern England through Boxing Day. We could be seeing some significant snow through Boxing Day. Again, where that snow line is, really um, is not uh, particularly resolved at this stage. We'll have to keep an eye on what the models do show. Beyond that, generally things remain cold with northerly winds. And as I said, this GFS run is a bit of a milder outlier. So it's that cold air not sinking as far southwards, and not getting that deep cold as far southwards. So majority of runs are a couple of degrees colder than this and showing more of this turning to snow. Beyond that, though, we see a transitional snow event with colder air bumping into the uh, with milder air pumping into the cold air before things all turn to rain beyond that. 
Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, which does go cold, we can see high pressure towards Greenland. Those southerly winds combining with the uh, northerly winds, and we see an easterly wind develop for Christmas Day. Really quite cold to the north of that easterly wind. That northerly uh, wind sort of starts to track further south throughout Christmas Day into Boxing Day, and we see colder air sinking through for all through the 27th, 28th, 29th, with much colder conditions. Especially further northwards, but even in the south at times. But of course, to the south, we've, we're closer to low pressure and milder air. So more precipitation and potential for bigger snow events as well. So we have to keep an eye, of course, on that. And we do see a, a breakdown very, very slowly, actually, around the 30th, 31st of December. And even right towards the end of the run, we still have much, much colder air in our east. And, and we look at the pressure charts, still a lot of blocking to our north. So we'll have to see how this does play out. GEM being much slower with the breakdown of this. And as I said, um, no real point looking out much beyond seven, eight, nine days at this stage. But this sort of pattern could sort of hold on. Um, we've seen this in the past where big blocks take much, much longer to break down than the initial models show. So we could be seeing this last into January, at least with the colder air, with colder air in place. Whenever we see it come under strain by milder or uh, milder conditions or low pressure systems, that's where we could see snow. So we've got to keep an eye out for that over the next few weeks. Now, if we do have a look at the GEM precipitation, see how what does what that does show. Again, it doesn't look like it's, oh, there we go, it's updated. So as we do run through, you can see precipitation running up from the south through Thursday to Thursday afternoon, not really turning to snow at all, perhaps slightly over the Scottish Highlands, but nothing too major. And then through Christmas Eve, we start to see more rain push up from the south and through Christmas Day, turns to snow on its leading edge potentially for dropping southwards. And then through Boxing Day, more snow potentially across central southern England. Not showing anything too significant, um, but there is the potential. And you can see by the end of Boxing Day, more snow potentially coming into the south. And yeah, it could be some significant snow in a few places if this pattern did come off. Of course, it will be slightly different to this. It's not particularly resolved at this stage, and we'll have to keep an eye really on the precipitation. And beyond that, as we head through the end of December, you can see precipitation trying to run in from the southwest bumping into the colder air, and that's where we could see more significant snow at times. Um, and again, you'll know, have to see how it does play out. Um, as you can see, both runs are slightly different, similar in their exact press charts now, and similar in sort of the air masses, but not exact in the exact position of precipitation, and of course, how far south that cold air does get, and how quickly it does get. Now, if we do have a look at the ECM WF, see that does compare now as i said the eastern wf is the mildest run and i did have a look at its ensembles this morning um which i won't be having a look at in this video but the eastern wf operational run we'll have a look at now was by far the mildest run but we can't discount it of course it is putting in some uncertainty of course but it, let's just take into mind that it is the mildest outlier that there is on its ensembles so we do run through, those northerly winds never really take off, and we actually stay with a sort of a southerly wind, and that, and that cold air nearly really not getting much further, further southwards and than the Scottish borders, really. In January, we're in a mild south-to-south uh, south southwesterly wind by day 10, and we'd be having a real mild Christmas and festive period. Completely, um, completely off the charts in terms of its uncertainty, um, and away from the um, away from sort of the bulk of the ensembles, which are going much much colder. And if we do have a look at uh, the UK Met Office run um, over the next seven days, and we'll have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see that they both go much colder again. So the Eastern WF run definitely do think that we should just sort of forget about it, unless we sort of a bit of a flip, which I really doubt we will at this stage. Now, if we do run through, you can see January. Um, southerly winds moving in, and then we get that cold air, and we get that cold, raw, easterly wind, and we get precipitation running up from the south into that colder air with the low pressure system, and that's where we could see significant snow. And we stay in that colder block all the way to the middle of next week, and we have Mulder trying to push in, but this colder block of air is trying to hold on. And as I said, we'll have to see how it does play out. All the models are showing slightly different scenarios 
in about a week's time. And again, we'll have to keep an eye on how they resolve. At this stage, though, it is looking cold for many on Christmas Day, at least for the north of the UK. Potentially the Midlands and even southern England could start to see some very cold air in the afternoon of Christmas Day, which could turn to snow. And then through Boxing Day and the days following that, it looks very cold for all. And in the south, there's the potential for significant frontal snow at times when low pressure tries to bump into it. Again, all depends on the track of these channel lows. And in the north and the east, Convective showers in from the northeast look likely as well. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, which have been brought bringing a lot of uncertainty over the last few days, as whenever we've had a few cold runs from the uh, from the operational runs, the ensemble is always showing much milder. But you can see the majority now are going much much colder from around the 25th, 26th, all the way to the 31st, if not 1st of January. Of course, there is some uncertainty, some much milder runs at the start and at the end, but the majority are going cold. You can see the big drop in upper air temperatures um, around Christmas Day into Boxing Day, and depending on what day it happens, it brings, brings big uncertainty, because you can see there is precipitation around with some of these much colder runs, and that would be snow. However, others staying much milder, including the operational run, which is on the milder end of the ensembles. But the majority you go down to minus 5 inch of THPA, if not lower than that, for a good five days. So it would be a prolonged cold spell, um, and even some staying bitterly cold all the way throughout the first few days of January. And again, as I said, we'll have to keep an eye really what happens. So there is a split around 31st December, some going much milder, some remaining much, much colder, and we'll have to see, keep an eye really on what happens. If we have a look at the snow depth spikes, which are not most accurate, of course, but showing potential around the 26th to 30th. And again, no real point looking at those at this stage as there's such disparity um, in what sort of air mass that precipitation will be falling as around Boxing Day or at least, or at least late Christmas Day. Um, so again, we'll have to keep an eye on the ensembles with that. And as I said, tomorrow I'll have a look at more detailed computer models at the potential for snow through Christmas Day into Boxing Day. Now, if we do have a look at Glasgow further northwards, um, it's going to be bitterly cold there. You can see quite a bit of uh, snow potential. Of course, a lot of it will be convection, so it won't be too well modelled on the uh, ensembles if they are lower resolution. But if we have a look at the age of future temperatures, you can see it is looking bitterly cold from around the 25th of December all the way to the 1st of January. The majority are bitterly cold, below minus 5 entry for the HBA, getting down close to minus 10 on some of the runs in the freezer, with temperatures hardly getting above freezing for a good 4 or 5 days, maybe 1 or 2 degrees here or there, but the majority of areas staying really quite cold, readily cold enough for widespread frosts, and the potential, of course, for snow. Now, if we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperatures, and you'll be able to see how cold and potentially snowy it may be. Now, as we run through, you can see over the next couple of days, it is generally dry and pretty chilly. But by Wednesday, we're seeing precipitation pushing from the southwest side of the snow over the Scottish mountains um, for Wednesday evening. And then things stay unsettled throughout the Thursday. Generally rain, however, turning to snow through the early hours of Friday um, over Scotland and more precipitation pushing in through the early hours of Christmas Day. A lot of cloud around and then we see this precipitation up from the south. Bumping into that cold air through the late hours of Christmas Day, turning to snow across many southern counties. And of course, you can see further northwards convective showers coming in on that easterly wind. And beyond that, we could be seeing significant snow maybe throughout the late hours of Christmas Day and early hours of Boxing Day with that precipitation pushing up. So you can see all the models are slightly showing, uh, are showing slightly different positioning of the precipitation, different intensity, and whether it's snow or rain. But you can see... The general themes are now there within the models, um, which have been really playing up over the last few days. Now, if we have a look at the temperatures, you'll see it is going to be cold. Today, generally quite a chilly day, 4 or 5 degrees, if not lower than that, a few spots in the north where it hardly got above freezing. Tonight, widespread frost, many areas freezing or below, um, and some areas many degrees below freezing heading into tomorrow. But things generally turning milder from the southwest. The north, however, should hold on to cold for the majority of the day. Many areas getting up to maybe 4 or 5 degrees tomorrow, but by Thursday, temperatures widely 7 or 8. And then as we head into Christmas Eve, can see quite chilly across the north. 
and potentially quite a widespread frost in the evening of Christmas Eve, but in the south, 8, 9, 10 degrees. However, as we start Christmas Day, you can see early hours, down in the south, 7 or 8 degrees, in the north, minus 4 or 5. And as we head through Christmas Day, that cold air sinks southwards, so by the afternoon, London area, 3 or 4 degrees, so much, much colder than 6 a.m. in the morning, and by 9 p.m., widely, Christmas Day is going to be freezing, well below freezing in the north, and in the Midlands and central southern England, starting to turn uh, below freezing, and widely throughout the early hours of box, uh, Boxing Day, it is bitterly cold, bitterly cold, and any precipitation falling out of the sky would be falling as snow. So, at this stage, there is the potential still for a white Christmas across many parts of northern England and Scotland for convective showers and the potential for frontal snow across many parts of England and Wales, depending on exact positioning. Some areas in northern England and the Midlands could be seeing a white Christmas in the, in the south, milder for most of the day before overnight turning much colder. And the potential, if the colder air is more progressive, we could see heavy snowfall in the south throughout the afternoon of Christmas Day. So this too is a high chance we see a white Christmas, at least for some. And it definitely does look like Boxing Day is going to be bitterly cold. And there's, again, the potential for more snow, especially throughout the morning of Boxing Day. And again, depending on the precipitation and uh, positioning of the low and how it does move through, we could be seeing significant snow. And we'll have to see how it does play out over the next few days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.